Brees, the Swiss Nano 7 was launched at AMB last year. What was the reason for its inception? We wanted to, to provide to the market a new uh, a machine with a bigger capacity. We are quite successful and surprised by the success of the Swiss Nano 4. It was a machine designed for the micromechanics industry, but then it found its way also in the dental, in the automotive, and also in the electronics. But this, those markets were in need of a machine of a bigger size, so therefore we decided to, uh, yeah, to venture ourselves in, uh, in this market with the Swiss Nano 7. So you had the Swiss Nano 4, which was a 4mm machine, now you've gone up to the 7 then. Um, is there any other differences with the Swiss Nano 7 compared to the 4? Yeah, obviously the machine is uh, slightly bigger, but it has also more tool, more capability, it's more flexible and uh, it still retains the same characteristic as the Swiss Nano 4. It means the ergonomy is, uh, is simply uh, is mega. Uh, the, the, the possibility, the flexibility that gives the, the, the machining area is much more elaborated than uh, what the Swiss Nano 4 can, uh, can actually offer. Talk me through the kinematics of this machine and what the options are available. Well, the great thing is a six-axis kinematics, so therefore you can really set up your machine and uh, fine-tune it with, uh, with every axis is, uh, in every dimension. It's, it's numerical, basically. You don't have to, to bother with manual adjustment and, and so on. So and, and what's the amount of tools that you can have? Because looking at here, there's, there's one platen for the main spindle and, and one for the sub as well. Correct, that's correct. You can go up to 18 tools in total. So you have four tools in, uh, in back operation on top. Uh, and on this particular machine here, you've got a thread whirling, uh, gear hobbing and, and those. Are, are they available to users too? Exactly, they are available and that's actually the novelty with the, the Swiss Nano 7. This was not available on the Swiss Nano 4. You can have, here we have a thread wiring device, you can have polygon milling device, uh, you can also have a polygon milling device in back operation and it really opens a lot of, uh, of new possibility for our customer. I, I did read as well 60,000 RPM milling on the, on the, on, on the cross drilling tools. That's an incredible speed, what, why would you need that? Well, it's mainly for, uh, it's designed for small parts and uh, for example, if you have to do a dental implant and you have a torx on the, on the other end, this would help you to, to mill this torx actually quite nicely. You get better results with uh, this type of milling than with stamping, for example. Um, one of my concerns would be deflection on bar as well. When you start talking about these very small diameters, is that not, is that, is that not something that can be an issue? Well, no, because the, the, the essence of the Swiss type lathe is really to have a, a support. The guy bush is really supporting the bar and actually the tool doesn't move, it stays fixed and that's really the bar who is going forward or backwards. It's the base of the philosophy of the Swiss type lathe and you can really do really pretty long part with that. And, and the tolerances that you need to achieve on, in some of these industries, for example, the watch industry really, micromechanics where it started, you, you're now into medical, automotive and other areas. Mm -hmm. What are the tolerances that people are chasing and what can these machines achieve in those sectors? So we say roughly in a normal condition we can hold five tolerances of plus minus three micron but we can go lower than that. Uh, especially in the watchmaking industry some are really chasing tolerances and uh, we, uh, we have seen tolerances of plus minus one micron. Incredibly. Of uh, 1.66. Incredibly tight. Now, one of the other points to, to highlight here, it's very evident, and the camera will spot this, they're very small machines, aren't it they? Is, is. You, you can get, I was reading, uh, 10 machines in 80 square metres. That's, mm -hmm. that's essentially, well, there's two spindles per machine, so there's 20 spindles yeah, yeah. in that area. Yeah, it is, it is. And with that, you have also a bar loader that is pretty long. It's an LNS Triton. And you have also, we don't, I don't know if you, we see it with the, the camera, but we, we have a, an HP pump also in this uh, in this layout so indeed that's a lot of machine per square meter and also a lot of part per square meter that's very compact and I would say that's a very attractive proposition to be able to to get that amount of machines in a very small area yeah. um, the the actual uh, when you look in the, the makeup of this machine the build of it uh, it's about a ton in weight how does it maintain rigidity it's something to do with the symmetrical casting and can, can you explain about those features? Yeah, yeah. we have a, a very small casting actually, uh, in the, it's the heart of the machine. The, all the machine is built around this, uh, this small casting. It's symmetrical, meaning the temperature uh, and the, the, the machine is very predictable. Uh, it's quickly uh, in temperature, so 
after a few parts, it's already within the, the right range. And once the machine is in production, and that's the feedback we have really from, uh, from customer, we have more than 250 machines, uh, Swiss Nano 4, in this region running. And when the machine runs, it's basically... Uh, it's a, it's a, um, it doesn't stop. Exactly, it doesn't stop, and it's a problem-free, uh, it's a problem-free machine. In that those installations, all of your customers around here, you said, have got more than one machine. That, that, that that's pretty uh, evident then that the installations are a success, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of uh, repeat order on this uh, on this machine, and that's uh, yeah, it proved that the machine has certain quality. Uh, one other thing, you got guide bush and non guide bush in this. You can change in 15 minutes. But why would you use a machine like this in the non guide bush mode? Well, we do. You do have some small, very tiny parts. Uh, for example, I'm speaking about a, a watch dial. Uh, for example, that can be made in gold. So obviously, you want to have the the shorter remaining length as as possible. And with all the milling feature that uh, that this machine can provide, you could prov you could do such a part on uh, on this machine. And uh, it would make sense to uh, to uh, to run it without guy bush. Of course, it's a bit an extreme example. Uh, most of our customers will uh, will use it with Guybush but the possibility is there it's pretty fast pretty convenient to convert it. it equally is the possibility of using coolants on this machine as well although most of the time you'll be using cutting oils you can do both yeah you can do both actually we have a motorized guide bush everything is sealed so you can use a, a water-based coolant whenever you want with this machine if you want and I think one of the other advantages to me looking at this is is the setting how you set the machine that must be something that people like, the fact that they're very close to the working area. They can get in and set their tools and, and, and monitor what's happening in there, can't they? Not many machines as, as, as open and accessible as this, is there? Yeah, that's pretty unique. Uh, that's a little bit the, the Swiss Nano trademark. And uh, indeed, operator really loves it. And it makes the, a huge difference on the, in, the, in the workshop. It's really easy to set up. People can really see uh, the, the machine how the, the machine is running, they can center their tool easily, they are really they are staying basically in front of the guy bush and that's a huge advantage, especially in the in those small uh, in those small diameter. So that's really that's really unique.